Sup nerds, Winstreak here. Today's video we are going to be looking at spawning enemies in different locations based on what's going on in the game. So to start off, we are going to create some sprites. Sprite 1 is just going to be our player character. Nothing special, we're just going to have a green character and rename that to player. Next, I want some spawn zones, and again, these will just be sprites. And we're going to do 400 by 200. And we will fill these in with red, but we'll bring that alpha down a bunch so it is pretty see-through. And I'm going to copy-paste these, or right-click, copy, control v paste, and... I'm just going to roughly throw them in each corner. And now I have the same sprite with a different instance in four different spots. And let's go ahead and throw mouse and keyboard on here for objects so we can use them in our code. And also I want to give our player the bullet character so it can move around. Make it a little bit slower here. Actually, we we'll go 150 and turn off set angle. And every tick, I'm just gonna have the bullet follow my mouse. Oops, one in every tick. We will just move to an angle, uh, set angle of motion, to the angle of my mouse. So to do this, we're going to throw an angle here, and we're going to grab our starting position, which is at all times our player.x, player.y, and our end location, which at all times will be our mouse.x, mouse.y. And this will just make our player character always look at our mouse wherever it is and just move towards that. So we'll hit play and we can see it wiggling around and yep. So I'm also going to change my Z order real quick. Send to bottom. I want him on top of everything. Send to top. And now we need some enemies. So more sprites. And we'll make these pretty small, 10 by 10. We want them to be fully alpha, little red dots. So now we have our enemies. And the first thing we're going to do is summon enemies. First thing we'll do is summon enemies on the furthest from our current position spawn zone. So let's go ahead and rename these so it's less confusing. We have spawn zone. And we have our enemies. So in the code, on keyboard click, this will be our command to spawn enemies. And I'm just going to throw Q for the first command we do. And let's do this step by step. On Q, we're going to create an object. And spawn zone dot X, spawn zone dot Y and we will create an enemy there. <clears throat> so here's essentially the first step of creating this and this is just going to pick a spawn zone. We don't really tell it what one to pick. I believe it will just grab the lowest UID which should be this one. We have UID 3, 4, 5, 6 and just spawn it there no matter what. Boop. And I hit it multiple times. Nothing crazy is happening and we can see we have our little buddy right there. So we want this to now pick the furthest one instead of just a random one. So I'm going to drop down here and add a blank sub event. And we will go to the spawn zone that is furthest. And when it says from what, we need to give it a position. So furthest from, and we want our player X and Y. Now we'll slide this down here, and now when I press it, 
you can see it came down here, went across there, up there, and so forth. So it does spawn <clears throat> away from our character. And now we need to have it spread out uh, to a random location within our spawn zone. So we are going to start for the X. We're going to start on the left side, which is B box left. And that'll just grab the left edge of our spawn zone. And now we want it to have the ability to spawn anywhere all the way over to the right edge. So we're going to plus a random amount. And that random amount will be the spawn zone width. And then we want to do the same thing with the Y axis. Y axis, if I said excess. Um, but we're going to start with E box top. And then we're going to add the random amount of its height. So spawn zone dot height. Close that off. And now when we press it, you can see they spawn all around, but they stay within the containment of our squares. And let's say we want to do this a lot. So we're going to add another event in here, and we're just going to repeat. And we can do this a hundred times. So we'll bring this up here, and now when I spawn, it'll do all 100 at once. And we can do this 100,000 times, if I could count. Oop. And now when I do this, it's going to stop my movement until all 100 are spawned. And obviously it's not very happy, but I'll move over here and spawn another 100,000. And yeah, so I'm gonna drop this down to a number that makes more sense. What if we wanted to change this number that every time we spawned, it's one more than the last time? So we can start at one and then two and then three. And this is best done with replacing this with a variable. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up now. Enemies to spawn. We're gonna start that out at one. And I'm going to replace this one with enemies to spawn. So it's still one, but now we have a way to call this specific one. So while we're in here on press, we are going to run this group of code. And then I'm going to have a second group of code, which will just add one to that value of enemies to spawn. So now each time it goes through this rigmarole, it also adds one to enemies to spawn. So spawn one, spawn two more. Spawn three, spawn four more, and now we should have five in the top left. One, two, three, four, five. So that is how you would edit the enemies to spawn amount in your code. Obviously, you don't have to do it by one. You can do any amount you want or however you want to do it. You can have difficulty levels, all that other fun stuff. I'm just going to reset this up to 100, um, actually 1,000. Oops. Show what I'm going for next easier. Um, so in the bottom right, you're going to see we have some overlap. So if I spawn up a bunch of things, the edge is right there, but over here it, it goes over the edge. And that is due to our enemies having size. Um, so the enemies lives in the center point right here, which is our image point. And from the center point, it goes five pixels in all directions. So the top is five pixels above the center point. The right is five to the right. The bottom is five below, etc. And I accidentally clicked that, putting it back. And that is because we are in the center and we have a 10 by 10 pixel. So in order to knock over the edge, we need to subtract five from the top and five from the bottom, and five from the left, five from the right. But we don't want to just subtract five because if we change the enemy size or have different enemies that we're checking, it's always going to subtract by five when that might not be the size of the enemy. So we're going to replace 
five with enemies uh, width and height um, in the correct way to make it work. So starting on the left side of the edge, we just said we needed to add by five, which enemies dot width is 10 and divided by two is five. And that makes sense because we are again starting in the center which means we are looking at half of it before we even get to it so we want to cut that in half and add that to the start of the left zone and that's going to make sure nothing spawns over the left edge only and now we are adding the entire width potentially up to the entire width to that spot and since we added five in the beginning here even without changing this, that means we're gonna now go over on the right side by five. So even before fixing our problem to fix this new problem we made, we wanna subtract this same statement from the amount that it can randomly add. So now it'll will no longer go over our left side of the square and will be the exact same on the right side. So to fix that, uh, to fix the right side as well, we're just gonna get rid of that divided by two, and this will make sure that it doesn't go over the right edge uh, in the same way that we made sure it didn't go over the left edge with this. So now the left and right, or x-axis, is x-axis is uh, fixed, and we can do the same thing for the y-axis, or up and down. So we are going to plus enemies dot type and divide that one by two and then minus enemies dot height no divide and let's bring this to 10,000 you know, I had to click too many times last time so now this box should be pretty darn good at only covering up the box and as you can see there, it doesn't necessarily cover all of inside the box. That is still random, but it no, excuse me, no longer goes over the edges. Boop. <clears throat> and obviously you can do with that as much, as much math and precision as you want in here. Um, but that is how you get it to perfectly make sure you don't overlap edges. Next, we will do a circle design. So we wanna go ahead and, actually, I'm just going to grab this completely and paste it. And we'll walk through each spot on what we want to change. So for here, we definitely don't want it to be based off of Q because we already used that. So I'm just gonna set this to W. So we have a new way to call in a spawn of circles. And we're going to repeat this enemy spawn amount of times. So we're still gonna keep this 10,000 in here. And let's go from pick furthest to pick random, why not? Um, so we will come back here and there is no random choice here. Since there's no random choice here, um, I think there's a built-in way to do this. I can't think of it right now, but we do have workarounds. Always have workarounds. So looking at these again, we have UID 3, 4, 5, and 5, and 6. So that means if we grab them by UID and we pick either 3, 4, 5, or 6, we always grab one of those. So we need to hop into here and add a local variable random spawn <clears throat> and that's set to zero so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, do, 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 do is that a blank sub event bring it up right below that and we're gonna set that random spawn value so set value random spawn and we want that to be Again, either three, four, five, or six. So I'm gonna do random. Do, 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 do. 
three to seven. And this will give us anything between 3.000000 to 6.9999999999. So once I throw an int on here or a floor on here, they are both the same in construct, they just round down. Um, this will give us from three to six. And I know that's weird, but that's just the way it is. And <clears throat> now we're going to set this random spawn and instead of picking the furthest, we are going to pick by UID. And we want the UID of random spawn because that is going to be one of those four numbers. And now it will summon them on a random one. And we can verify this by, oops. I'm just resetting these to the X and Y point. And we can verify that this is random by just putting that dot on the center of each one. And it doesn't matter that I have 10,000 spawning, they're all gonna spawn exactly on top of each other, so it won't matter. Um, but we can see this one spawned on top of me, oh, this one spawned on the bottom right, it spawned on one of the two spots I already clicked, oh, that one got the top right, and I've spawned 70,000, 80,000 of them, so I'm starting to lag here, but uh, we did eventually hit all four spots. So we are good to go here. And now we just need to spread them out in a circle. And that we do by grabbing this enemy that we just created and setting its position towards an angle. So move at angle. This will give us both the options we want. And I'm gonna set random 360. Oops. And this will let it look in any direction. And then the distance we will do random 95 and I chose this number because we are looking at the center point here and this is 200 pixels high which means oops which means halfway up from the middle to the top would be 100 pixels but we still got to remember that our enemies have 5 pixels of overlap so we subtracted that so now they will spawn within the square but in a circle and we can show that oh and they also spawn randomly boom 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 and i'm sure you can hear my keyboard clicking uh, i had like three in a row spawn in the top left but uh, yeah we get random and they go wherever they want out of the four and last but not least we will do one more. I'm going to copy paste this again because it gives us everything we need. We're going to set this to E so we have a new way to summon it. We don't need random spawn anymore and deleting that will remove that top line as well because it used the random spawn uh, local variable and now I no longer have a local variable here. And we want to create enemies in um, let's just, I'm going to actually create a new sprite. Uh, sprite, so we have, just going to make this little seven here, and we're just going to put this right here. And I'm going to name this spawn seven. And the goal here will be to have enemies in the form of the seven. And we will do that by using our collision polygons to verify whether or not we are on the seven versus just inside of this block. So we have a 250 by 250. We'll need that later. And right now we're going to guess the polygon shape. And, oh my god, that was a terrible guess. But, we will drag these to where they need to be. And we have more points than necessary. But more points doesn't matter outside of the extra work of dragging and dropping. So essentially I could remove this point. It doesn't do anything for me. 
Did I just create another point? That was impressive. Boop. See, deleted, nothing happened, deleted, nothing happened. But we have this sloppy seven shape and that is what I want my enemies to cover. <clears throat> so we are going to spawn 10,000 enemies and we want them to go on my spawn seven. So 7.x, 7.y, that'll get us started at least. Oof, seven dot y. There we go. And we need to essentially attempt to, I'm gonna remove that for now. We need to attempt to create the enemy on our seven. And the way I do it is if I fail, so it's gonna be anywhere within here. Actually, let's jump this to, we already know how to fill the whole box and that is by using this, which is going to be covering from, I don't have my mouse on, but this whole area. So we're gonna let them just spawn anywhere in this whole area by using what we already know from this first one. So I'm gonna actually just copy paste this, delete that other one, and then we'll edit these to be on spawn seven instead of spawn zones. And now if I press E, you'll see that it just covers up that whole area, which is gross. <clears throat> so now we just need to do a check to see if we're on the seven or off of the seven while inside of there. So we're gonna do that with a function and we're gonna call that retry, and this is gonna be what is known as a recursive function. It is going to continue to check itself until it fixes itself. Um, I guess it's not a true recursion, it's not resending in all of the data. But yeah, anyways, I digress. We're going to call this function, we're gonna verify if it's on seven, and to call this function, we hop into function and we give it retry. And when we call this function, we wanna send it the one enemy that we just worked with, not all 200 or 10,000 or whatever, just the one we just made each time all 10,000 times. So we're gonna add a parameter here, and we're gonna call this UID, and we're also going to send in that enemies UID when we call the function. And inside the function, we are going to pick enemy by UID. So now, because we have the UID which was sent in by this enemy through this function sitting right here, when I say pick an enemy by UID, that is the most recent one that was just spawned, and I verify, are you overlapping? So, overlapping, and we want it to be overlapping the seven, and since we set those collision polygons, it will only be true if it is overlapping on the actual seven, and then I'm gonna invert that. So now it's only if it's not overlapping the seven, and now I'm just gonna delete it. Oops. Uh, what'd I do? Did I lose my mind? Cheat sheet. <clears throat> Destroy. The doy. Oi. So we're going to delete it by using the destroy function. And that will ensure that only ones appear on the seven, none elsewhere. But we don't have 10,000 units here. And we'll even verify that. In debug mode, we have our enemies. We technically have one off the screen. So we should have 10,001 after pressing this. And I clicked it and boom, 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 boom. We're up to just under 3,500. So how do we get that other 6,500? All the ones that we're destroying here need to be replaced. And this is where the recursion kicks in. We're gonna recall this retry function, but we also need to summon a new enemy with it. So this whole thing happens every time we fail. Every time we fail, we destroy and we repeat the whole process of that one unit. So turn one, 
we create an enemy, it's on the seven, nothing happens. Turn two, create an enemy, on the seven, nothing happens. Turn three, create an enemy, not on the seven, destroy it. Create an enemy, not on the seven, destroy it. Create an enemy, on the seven, nothing happens. Third enemy, in, or fourth enemy, and so on, so forth, forever, all 10,000. And now we can see, bloop, and I guess it would have made more sense to show you through debug mode, because now we should get all, boom, 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 boom. 10,001. So, that's everything for you. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, throw it all down below. I will get back to them as soon as I can. Otherwise, peace.